Personal notice, change is my stock and trade. Except today. If you've got a job that's too tough for you to handle, then it's too tough for me. Merry Christmas, George Valentine. And don't bother me with details. Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invite you to Let George Do It. Santa Claus in Glass, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. Stabbed, I said. S-T-A-B-B-E-D. Stabbed. This bird's been stabbed. What do you say we should do, George? Listen, Johnson, I don't want to work on Christmas any more than you do, but Did we... Did you tell him that's the way we found him, Hold George? Hold it, Christy. I can't hear it. Yeah, that's right, Johnson. He was all trussed up and everything, but... What? Head? What head? He doesn't have one, naturally. That's the point. The knife must have... Oh. Oh, I get it, Johnson. Okay, see you later. Well, George? Hey, what happened to the radio? Oh, there we are. For heaven's sake, it's almost three o'clock. What did he, he say? He says, his wife says, just put some stuffing where the butcher tore the skin and shove it in the oven. Oh, thanks. I thought you told me you knew how to cook a duck. Well, I do, stupid, but the skin's too tough to sew. It just never occurred to me to use stuffing at both ends. Relax, I said. You know, I like the way you bait that critter. <laughs> just like my mother used to do Efficiency and tender care. <laughs> There's a real art to it. Oh, I'm full of old fashioned virtues. You know, it's funny the things you remember about Christmas. We always had the whole family for dinner, including a spinster aunt who played the little star of Bethlehem on a cornet. <laughs> cornet? <laughs> we had a second cousin who yodeled after he stayed eggnog. <laughs> oh, George, after all this time, there's still so many things we don't know about each other. Angel, come here. Come on, I'll put this spoon down. Yes, sir. Well, the mistletoe is in the other room, and the kitchen is not very romantic, but, uh... Well, this has been a pretty swell Christmas. The best we've ever had together. So all kidding aside. Oh, you're welcome. You're very welcome. No, we still have some work in there setting the table. Yes, yes. And some more music to hear. Enough to last us till next year. What's the matter, Brooksy? Oh, George, I can't help thinking. I know it's Christmas, but that silly ad you put in the paper. Don't bother me with details. Oh, nobody even it's read it. It's just daring people to bother you, Look, George. it's afternoon already, isn't it? Has anybody been bothered? George, don't answer the door. It's too early for anybody for dinner, and it's too late hey, for... Hey, hey, this is your apartment, not mine. Nobody knows I'm here. Christmas is for us, George, and for happy people. It's not for trouble and danger <laughs> and all of It's for a little faith in human nature, Angel. Everybody else feels the same way we do. What do you want to bet? This is only a... Well, hello. Who are you? You were looking in the keyhole. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It's, it's Merry Christmas. Yeah, same to you. But uh, aren't you liable to get hurt doing that? No, 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 no not today. Nobody takes offense. Peace and goodwill. Look, uh, who are you, friend? Well, what do you want? Nothing. I don't want nothing. It's just a... Well, uh, <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> there you are, Angel. See what I told you? I'm the new elevator man. My name is Bertie. Oh. Oh! And according to my list, your name is Miss Brooks. But don't think I haven't noticed you already. You're a lucky man, sir. I said to myself, now there's a young lady with mistletoe in her eyes. Uh, excuse me. I mean, thank you. Just a second. Always get them. Never failed. Mistletoe in their eyes. They kind of like that kind of talk. Okay, so you're a student of human nature. Where did she go? Here, it's all wrapped. I meant to give it to you earlier. I'm sorry, I forgot. Oh, well, a little present for the elevator man. Now, ain't that a surprise? Oh, yeah. Yes, pretty, isn't it? I'm afraid it's not much. Don't but... you apologize, miss. Most exciting things come in little packages, I say. Oh, yeah, sure. I say that, too. 
Well, your problem's settled now, friend, so we'll see you later, huh? Hey, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute, sir. Oh, George, who else did I forget to get a... Now, hold it, I, I said I got a package. It's delivery. I'll take it. I'm your man. Package? Who's it for? Uh, Mr. Eric Suchek. For him, huh? Who's Eric Suchek? Down the hall. He's an older man, sort of continental. I don't know what he does. I've never really talked to him, but he's... Very interesting looking. Down the hall, you say, uh, which door? I'll take it for you, Mac. I'll take it. Oh, no, you won't. Special delivery service. Besides, I'm out for my own tip. Mr. Suchek's asleep. He told me to take anything I came for. Asleep this time of day? You sure? Well, you guys figure it out. Come on, Angel, back inside. I wonder what it is, George. It's a fancy wrapping. Oh, curiosity. Let's Joe, have right? it, Mac. I ain't got all day. Suchek's an actor or something. I used to be in Europe. Probably something romantic from a woman. Oh. Yeah. Now, let's have the package, Mac, and here's your tip. Hey, what is it? George, look, It's he's... a present the lady just gave me, a necktie, I suppose, as they always are. You need it worse than I do, Mac. Well, it's a little irregular. Sue Check will make it up to me. Merry Christmas, folks. Well, the holiday's getting a little commercial. Did you see? He gave him my necktie. My present, he just gave it away. Well, he expects something better out of Sue Check. We shouldn't have let him do it. Well, it's none of our business, Angel. That elevator man's up to something. I know he is. George, what... What do you suppose was in that special package? Hey, 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 stop it. Uh, how, how do you do? Uh, season's greetings, uh, that sort of thing. Thanks. Uh, who are you? You don't mind if I step in for just a moment, do you? What? Thank you. Thank you so much. Sure, sure. Come right on in. This is Grand Hotel. I beg your pardon. Oh. Oh, yes, I see. Well, I'm so glad somebody died. Uh, Farnham is the name, Leopold J. Farnham, and I assure you, I'm, I'm more embarrassed than you are. I say you, you're having duck, aren't you? I can smell it. <laughs> I doubt if there's enough to go around, Mr. Farnham. Uh, maybe what you're looking for is a Tom and Jerry. Oh, no, uh, please. Please, I, I, I didn't want her to see me. That's all. Her? I'm so sorry. It, it, it's perfectly all right, really. I was just, uh, I was on my way to Suchek's apartment. Suchek, huh? Yes. Oh, he's quite a popular fellow. The old world charm, the gaiety, the hand kissing, that sort of... But your neighbors, you'll know him, of course. I'm beginning to want to. What's this, uh, who's this her? Oh, just someone I saw coming off the elevator. A little, a little social faux pas, nothing more. I wanted to keep the day happy. She's gone down the hall now anyway, and I can slip to the stairs. But tell us why you wanted... Much obliged. And I hope you enjoy that doctor. The Mad Hatter. Darling, what's going on? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. A lot of mink coat down the hall there. Eh? Oh. Knocking at Mr. Suchek's door. Yeah. So that's the woman Mr. Farnham was talking about. Oh. Come on, Angel. If other people can play games, I guess I can, now, too. Now, George, you stay here. Don't you dare get mixed I up in it. I just want to tell her she's not knocking loud enough. Eric. Oh, Eric. Excuse me, but I heard the elevator man say Mr. Suchek was still asleep. What? Who are you? This is Mr. Valentine, and I'm Claire Brooks. I live next door, you see. But asleep? After three o'clock. What went on here last night? A party? Oh, of course. The man with all the friends. The idol of the dowagers. Well, they were very quiet. I mean, I heard people leaving his apartment long before midnight. My apartment, you mean. But it would be decorous, wouldn't it? If he's always so decorous. The model of behavior. Did you say your apartment? Of course it's mine. Quite a big one, you know. You don't think he could afford it, do you? I'm Mrs. Suchek. Uh, Mrs.? Or doesn't he tell his neighbors about his wife? Would it spoil that beautiful aura of tragic, unemployed Europeans? <laughs> oh, you think I'm really nasty, don't you? I traveled a long way just to wish him Merry Christmas, that's all. And the roads from the country house are such a fright. Such a dreadful... I, uh, I just think you didn't knock loud enough. Mr. Suchek. Hey, Mr. Suchek, wake up. He's really a light sleeper, I think. Mr. Suchek. George. Well, I'll take it easy, both of you. But uh, hurry up with a key, will you? Well, I've got it here someplace. I never use it except when I entertain in town once in a while myself a big place, but he takes care of it for me. At least he does that. There, is that one the key? Oh, yes. Here. Eric! Eric! Where are you? 
George Stopper, you look for him. Well, it's her house, not mine, Lucy. What's the matter with you anyway? What do you what do you expect her to find? She's not here. Oh. Went out someplace. Okay, Mr. Suchek, we'll just move She was on. here an hour ago. Huh? I had my chauffeur phone to make sure. Had him pretend he was somebody else. Eric doesn't like to surprise. But I was going to surprise him anyway. That's why I couldn't understand that sleeping business. Funny he didn't wind the clock. What did you say? The clock had stopped last night, I guess. Milk is still on the back porch. Look, it's closer here. Oh, he just went out someplace. What? His, his bed hasn't been slept in. Well, he went out last night, then. There's nothing to get all excited oh, don't about. don't leave me. Please don't leave me. All right, Mr. Suchek. What are you so nervous about? Why do you think something's wrong? Oh, it's Christmas. I don't want to be alone. I don't know why I didn't stay in the country. There's a wonderful party out there. Sixteen people for the weekend. And the roads are so frightful. I always give huge parties on Christmas. One of the nice things about inheriting a lot of money. Why worry about a husband you don't like, anyway? What? Oh. Well, why not? I never know what he's up to. My friends in town think he's wonderful and so charming, and he's always getting into confidential little deals with them. My friends, mind you, not his. All so rich, and he just loves rich people. All right, let's get off the subject and turn on the radio. Listen. <laughs> I used to be a musician, you know. A very bad one. Studied in Paris. Yes, Mr. Valentine, I'm very nasty. I'm sorry. I'm worried about him. We're so far apart, and he's up to something. I don't know what it is, but... But it is Christmas. Oh, Mrs. Suchek, did you say your husband didn't have any money? Huh? <laughs> well, really, he's not a little boy, for heaven's sake. Running around without pocket money, he does get his allowance. No. No, he doesn't work. Just charming, that's all. It was different 20 years ago. Over there, he was an actor. But then they closed the theaters in Europe. You can't live on pride forever, can you? Oh, run along, you two. This is absurd and ridiculous. I'm tired and would like to take a nap. Okay. Come on, Lucy. George, I asked about money because he's got a bank book in there on his desk. Huh? And it shows a balance of several thousand dollars, all deposited in the last few months. Mm, nosy. But he has notes about meeting people at all hours, too. Deliver shipment to Joe at 3 o'clock. Steamship docking at 7 a.m., Pier 52. Get bids from jewelers on... Anyway, that kind of... Skip it, skip it. But shouldn't we say something? And shouldn't we ask about that man who was just up Leave the hall? Leave alone, and... Brooksy. We don't know what kind of a guy her husband is or what he's up to. I wonder if she does. Oh, are you coming, too? It's cold here. I don't like it. I'm going to run down to a hotel. Okay, which one? I want to phone you after I've had a little talk with the elevator man. Yes, he was so positive about Mr. Suchek being asleep. Never mind. See you later, Mrs. Suchek. Oh, wait a minute. Miss Brooks. You didn't see a mirror in there, did you? The room beyond? What? A mirror, a hand mirror. I left it here the last time. It's gold. It has my initials. And there's a diamond thing. Well, I guess it's just mislaid or something. It's not important. Never mind. George! Hey, what's the matter with you, friend? Nothing. I'm all right. Freddy, you were just lying. We checked both really. elevators. Couldn't I'm find fine, you. I'm fine, I tell you. But look at your room. All your presents. Leave me are... alone. And thank you. Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah. A very merry one. Buster, who hit you? Nobody. You didn't catch that mouse with cheese. Nobody. I told you I'm all right. Leave me alone. Oh, yes. And nothing's going on today. And I suppose Mr. Suchek is fine, too. Your big operator friend who sleeps says you. I didn't do nothing and nobody hit me. All these presents. But where's that package of Suchek's? The one you took delivery for? George, it's not here, is it? That's why somebody hit you, Freddy? I don't know a thing. 
And I'm sick of this job anyway, so goodbye and Happy New Year. Oh, George, what's going on? What is it? He's not sick of this job. He's just got an angle on a better one. Come on, back up to the lobby. Angle? Everybody's got an angle. But you were right. Somebody must have taken a suit check package away from him, Booksy. What the heck kind of a thing?